Hi, Cizrin here with another Path of Exo University before Expedition Link 3.15 and now we're going to talk about endgame bosses in Path of Exo. So, we're going to cover topics such as how to reach the bosses, what the rewards are, um, and yeah, like we're, we're not going to like specifically talk about tactics for each boss, but we'll, uh, we'll cover a lot of stuff. So, we'll start with Aziri. So for Aziri, you need a full set of Sacrifice Fragments to access the Apex of Sacrifice. So you need to get a Midnight, a Noon, a Dusk, and a Dawn. And the Fragments mostly drop from Vile Side Areas. You can also get them from Corrupted Map Bosses. Her Mass Divination card, which drops a lot early on. And um, a lot of the time you'll see a reward, like a chest or something, with this icon on it. And um, that can drop these as well. It like, looks like a Fragment. Now you can also, if you put a singular one of these in the map device, like let's say for instance that you have, maybe you have um, everything except midnight, but maybe you have like seven of this one, you can put a singular one into your map device and this will open a Val side area. This is a good place to farm corrupted six things and you have a decent chance that it'll drop a midnight. And it's not terrible XP when you've just started mapping. So if you want to get an Aziri early done in the league, that is a good way to do that. If you uh, just have like maybe like say a little bit mid into the league or a few weeks into the league, you might end up noticing that you have maybe like 70 or 80 or even more of these lying around. And there is actually a really, really good use for these except just plugging up your fragment tab. And that is that you can place one of them in a map. So you could put like a map and three of these. And that would be 5% quantity each. So if you put a map and uh, actually later when you have a five slot map device, you could put a map and four of these in, uh, which would give it 20% additional quality. This is really good uh, when you're first breaching into 13, 16, etc. and struggling for map sustain. <coughs> map sustain, sorry. And uh, once you're in the Apex of Sacrifice, it can very rarely drop the Alluring Bounty, which gives you 10 Exalted Orbs, but it's uh, 1 out of 7 of the div cards. And it also drops the Ethereal... Ethereal? Ethereal? Uh, Ethereal? Uh, which is a 6 thing Val Regalia Divination card. And that's item level 80, I think. Now, Aziri has some really, really good loot, and this has been updated in the last patch, not the coming one, but the one before. And uh, Aziri's Promise, very, very strong flask, and uh, it's fairly, like, it sells very well at the start of a league in trade league, especially in hardcore, it can sell for, like, 15 to 40 chaos for the first ones. Um, if there are a lot of builds needing them, then even more. Very, very strong for a lot of physical builds that already do conversion and stuff. And um, it would probably be very expensive if it was more rare. Aziri Step as well, very, very good, especially on Hardcore. The Spell Dodge is huge for a lot of builds, so a lot of people like to get these and then enchant them with Spell Dodge. And um, they can sell for a decent amount. I was selling these for like 2 to 3x in Hardcore. Doriani's Catalyst depends a little bit. It's very, very good early because it gives you pure elemental damage and it gives you some leech. The downside is that it can't have anything like trigger, socketed gems on it, etc. But if you're a build that doesn't need that, Doriani's Catalyst is very good early and definitely something you could do all the bosses in the game with. Tremorate Authority is one of the new items that was added in uh, Ultimatum League. And uh, this is a ring that has three random mods from its pool and it can drop a different one from Uber Aziri, which is the same ring, but it can have four mods. Um, so that's really, really cool. We also have Doriana's Imitation, which is a belt that has fire, cold, lightning, or physical damage leech. Um, it can sometimes be hard to get like physical damage spell leech, so the amulet is pretty good, or sorry, the, the belt is pretty good for that early. Sacrificial Garb as well, which got buffed. Um, it has uh, like plus one vol gem levels, and then Uber is here, you can drop a unique Sacrificial Garb. <laughs> and you can also get the Triscuit, Tris, Triscuit. You can get that div card. Triskidecaphobia. Triskidecaphobia. I think that's it. Triskidecaphobia. Words. And uh, when you are killing Aziri, she can also drop the mortal fragments. And uh, that is to access Uber Aziri. Um, this is a lot, lot harder 
the normal one you might find very easily um, becomes a fight that you master quickly. Whereas Uber and Ziri, even when you're a seasoned player, it's uh, it's one of the hardest, if not the hardest, fight in the game. And uh, even as part of the feared, Uber and Ziri is very, very hard there as well. So just always a very challenging fight and uh, also very rewarding. And you can get the fragments from normal Ziri. You can get it from a divination card, so Sambodi's Vow, um, which drops from Betrayal Syndicate members. You can get Mortal Hope from the divination card, Last Hope. Uh, and that's actually made that uh, the um, Mortal Hope is no longer the rarest one because of that divination card. And uh, you can also get them from high level fragment reward mechanic. You'll also be able to place one of these alongside a map into the map device for 10% quantity. This is still done when you're like super, super juicing maps, like you're really investing into one map and whenever the fragments aren't that expensive. So in the Alluring Abyss, you can also drop Alluring Bounty, but here you can also drop House of Mirrors. And um, Uber Siri also drops. Do you know what I said? Very rewarding. I take that back. It used to be very rewarding. It's not really anymore. There's no reason to do this. Um, a series Acuity, which are gloves that are falling off. Actually, it's oh, it's it's just better to farm normal at Siri in hindsight. Ignore what I said. Uh, but yeah, a series Acuity, which are pretty mech gloves. A series Disfavor, uh, which the biggest problem with this is that. I mean, I wouldn't feel comfortable farming Uberziri with a disfavor. So the fact that the item that drops from the boss isn't good enough to fight the boss is probably a good thing. Or, I mean, bad thing. Aziri's Rule, which is a pretty cool new item. This is actually pretty great. Um, it's basically, it gives you the Aziri Flame Blast. It's very, very fun. Not necessarily the strongest thing in the game, but a very cool mechanic. The Vertex, this is actually quite widely used. It's also a very common drop, so you are very likely to get it. Um, but a lot of people do prefer using the Cyrus helmet instead, but Vertex is still used a lot. Tremorate's Authority. This is probably the main reason to farm Uber at Ziri, is to try to get a Tremorate Authority. Depends a little bit on the patch and how things are nerfed or buffed, but at least um, some Tremorate Authorities were two and three mirrors in uh, Ultimatum League, if you got a really, really spicy combo. So it'll be interesting to see... Um, how that is affected, but uh, that's pretty much the only thing I tried to farm. I did like 30 or 40 of series without getting a single one. Uh, Aziris Splendor, these are fairly usable, but also not really at the point in the game where you are able to farm Uber series. so basically a common problem here. Um, the Energy Shield one is actually pretty decent, and it did get buffed with the plus gem level. And then we also have the Triscatafo... Trisca Triscatic... Next up, let's talk about the Pale Court. And uh, this is something a lot of people don't always know how to access. <clears throat> and uh, while going for the Pale Court, you can also unlock loads of multiple crafts for your um, crafting bench. With such things as like cannot roll attack mods, prefixes cannot be changed, and the final one being multi-mod. And uh, you have to complete four different quest chains to do this fight, like the Unbreathing Queen uh, and stuff like that. And once you get like the, the V, fifth one, then you get a craft recipe, you get to fight like a mini boss, and you get a fragment from that mini boss. Uh, if you if you like drop, let's say you drop on Breathing Queen 4, you can start at that, put it in, do it, and then talk to Navali, and like within the next 50 prophecies, she'll give you number 5. You could also trade these and sell them to other people. And you can purchase any part of the prophecy chains and complete them out of order. And like you don't need to have done 1, 2, 3, 4. You could just start at 5. Seeking a Prophecy will give you the next part of the chain based on what you completed last. So if you've done three, in the future you're going to get four. She never says when though. You could It could take a while. It's very RNG. All five Metacrafts are required from these chains. Uh, so if you only buy the keys, then you only get the multi mod. You don't get the other ones. So the different ones are the Feral Lord, the Plague Maw, the Unbreathing Queen, and Unbearable Whispers. And um, these crafts are pretty expensive, except cannot roll caster modes. It's like five or eight blessed orbs. Uh, the other ones are one or two exalts, and uh, they're still incredibly worth doing. There's some really, really strong crafts we can do with this, uh, especially with things like unveils from betrayal. And um, there are some interesting drops from the pale court and from like the the minions with like 
uh, grip of the console is very, very expensive, especially on hardcore. It can go up to 5, 6x. Um, it depends how much people are playing Herald of Agony, etc. But yeah, it can get very, very expensive. So the Unbreathing Coin is worth doing um, just to make money. I don't know what the price would be on softcore, but it's pretty expensive. Um, and the pale core has like I think one of the Ariel's fostering cells on soft core, but I'm I'm not sure. The Volcor's guidance as well is pretty fun to make builds around, but they're not necessarily the strongest. Let's talk about breach. Uh, if you were looking to get repetitive strain injury, this is a really really good way to do so. You have to pick up a hundred splinters in order to form a breach stone, and. Um, once you have the Breach Stone, you can, uh, well, first off, calm your hand down and then go fight the boss. And there are five different Breach Stones. We have Tool, Sof, Esh, Ulnatul, and Chalupa. And um, the elemental ones are the easiest. In theory, I would say Ulnatul is generally easier than Tool, but uh, in, in theory, like the elemental ones are supposed to be the easier ones, then Ulnatul, and then Chalupa. And uh, we can also upgrade these via blessings of the same type. So if you have an Ulnatol's blessing, then you can upgrade the Ulnatol. Or if you have a Chalupa blessing, then you can upgrade the Chalupa one. You can also upgrade these in a Betrayal Research safe house with it that fled in it. And uh, it depends on the level. So if it's a 1, it's just a, a 1 tier upgrade. If it's a level 2, it's a level 2 tier upgrade. And uh, at 3, it goes all the way to pure. And pure breach stones are 82, 81, and 80, depending on uh, which one it is. And um, a shit ton of XP. This is very, very common to do in rotations with other players. So the way that would work is that you grab um, six people or well, a total of six people in the party. Everybody brings a breach stone. So like generally like similar ones, so, like you wouldn't have one person bring Trayula and the other five bring Zoff. But um, you all bring a breach stone and you run them together. Maybe even skip the boss, but you get a shit ton of experience. Uh, this is a very, very common way of leveling to 100. And uh, yeah, whenever you increase the tier, it's the level of the stone goes up, the chance of dropping a blessing. So we have normal, charged, enriched, and pure. And purists have a 100% chance of dropping the, um, the uh, blessing. So if you really need a Chayula blessing, then uh, you can do a pure Chayula and you are guaranteed it. And increasing the tier does not change the amount of monsters that are in the instance, but it does increase the uh, XP. They are actually fairly dangerous at pure, and even the monsters can kill you. There are some mechanics that drop pure breach stones as well, or just uh, full breach stones. Uh, Heist in particular drops a lot of breach stones. There are also Atlas passives that make it possible that if a splinter was going to drop, you'll drop a uh, full breach stone instead. And all Breach Lord specific items can be upgraded with the appropriate blessing, generally making them stronger. Not always, but generally. Um, like for example, the Zoff amulet, there are uses for that, upgraded and upgraded. And here we have like a, a list of like the different um, items. And um, there's, there's a very weird, interesting drop mechanic with Breach, which I found very amusing. And if you're in a map, opening a breach, then the normal monsters can drop the breach uniques, like the, the lowest level. Like, for example, um, yeah, like the, the unupgraded. They can drop from normal monsters in a breach. But if a boss spawns in a normal breach in a map, that cannot drop the items. And once you actually open up a breach stone, then the normal monsters can no longer drop the breach item, but then it can only drop from the boss. So it's uh, something I always find very weird with the uh, drop rules there. But uh, yeah. Caused a lot of concern during Breach State because a lot of people thought the Chayula's eye was a Breach item. <clears throat> but it is not. Next up, we're going to talk about Katarina, Master of Undeath. So here you have to complete safe houses to gather intelligence on the Syndicate Mastermind. And after you've gathered enough intelligence, her safe house becomes available. And um, she's a pretty hard fight. She can be very rippy as well, so got to be careful on this one. There are not really any shortcuts to spawning her. You generally need to do at least four safe houses, generally. Um, the more high-level people that are in the safe house, the more intelligence it's going to give. You could probably get away with three really juiced ones. But if you only have one or two members in the uh, research safe houses, for example, 
then it'll take as much as five or six. And uh, there are Atlas passives as well that will like speed up the process. And uh, like I said, higher rank safe house leaders give more intelligence. Now, killing Katarina upgrades all current masters by one level. If you have something that's already level two, it'll push it to level three. If you have something that is level three, it'll push it to level four, which is actually a big buff for us and has made it very worth farming Katarina for a change. However, there is a big downside because she does reset your betrayal board. It'll reset all the lines between characters, like the relationships, and it'll sometimes kick people out or put new people in. And uh, yeah, a lot of the rewards from safe houses are just extremely worth. And we have a separate betrayal video that goes very in depth in this. And again, be very careful of the fight. I really do want to do a separate video talking about each boss and how to kill it as well. And uh, the drops from Katarina herself has unveils. And uh, we have Cinder Swallow, Devouring Diadem, Cane of Kulamak, Bitterbind Point, and the Queen's Hunger. And um, they will drop with um, one unveiled modifier. And Cane of Kulamak drops for three. It's basically a Staff Paradoxica. Very, very strong and cool items. Next up, we have Shaper. And... Um, to kill the Shaper, you need to kill his four Guardians first. And you don't necessarily need to kill one of each because Harvest has a mechanic where you can swap. Say you have two Hydras but no Phoenix, you can swap Fragments around randomly. So um, if you find, for example, one boss is a lot easier than the other, you do have the ability to swap them around. But Shaper Guardians are tier 16 maps which you can drop from tier 14 plus bosses. And uh, the more Awakening level you have, the bigger chance of it dropping. And Zana can have Guardian maps in her Atlas mission as viable maps and also when you're doing missions. And uh, these can actually be horizoned, so you can horizon a Chimera into a Hydra. And um, once you kill the Shaper, you will get a Uber Shaper Fragment, which is needed to kill Uber Elder. Most of like, the, the Shaper item is like... Some of them are okay, depends a little bit on the meta. Like for example, Starforge isn't super popular right now. Uh, the Shaper Gloves have been like pretty consistently popular and strong, I would say. Uh, Dying Sun. Dying Sun depends a little bit on the flask rework, but might be extremely expensive, assuming uh, if that flask build is any good. It could be really, really expensive. The uh, Solstice Amulet Jewel is sometimes very expensive. Um, the Boots have not seen a use since patch 2.13 or something. I don't know if anyone remembers when Ethereal Knives died, but ever since we stopped playing EK, those boots have not been used. The Spark and EK are the only builds that I've ever used those boots and they've never been buffed. Very sad. Um, is there any other drop? Not that I can remember. But generally, um, it does still have loot worth dropping. And obviously the fragment is very good. Next up we have Elder. <coughs> uh, next up you have to kill the Elder Guardians, Constrictor, Enslaver, Eradicator, and Purifier. And they do not have their own maps. So you cannot horizon a um, you cannot horizon an Enslaver to get a Constrictor. But you can um, swap these fragments around in Harvest. Now there is a really, really neat trick with the way that horizoning these Elder Guardian maps work. So maybe you really don't like Bramble Valley. Maybe you really don't like the Forge. So if you have, let's say, a uh, a tier 15 Enslaver, and you really want to do a tier 15 Forge, I think Forge is 15, you can horizon one of these to that map you don't want to do and corrupt it, and you will it will count as completion. Because generally, there are some of the new maps in Path of Exile um, that are harder than these Elder Guardians. So you can uh, you can use this as a trick that instead of uh, instead of fighting maybe Bramble Valley Forge or like one of the maps that you don't like doing something you might find is really dangerous you can just horizon a constrictor and slave eradicator or purifier onto those maps. Um, so that's generally what I did on hardcore because I didn't want to deal with unbalanced new maps that don't have a higher reward than for example the beach boss Hillary. Um So that's what I do. Very, very uh, useful. And uh, these also drop from tier 14 bosses based on your awakening level, just like Shaper Guardian maps, and Zana can have these as well. And um, 
when you reach the map of the boss, the boss of the map, then the elder's gonna arrive and kill the boss, so you don't fight the normal map boss, uh, unlike Conqueror Guardians. Each elder guardian fight is split into three phases, and you do get some flash charges between each one, and then you get, like, teleported. And whenever you kill the elder, that awards you with one of the four fragments required for Uber Elder, and two of them being droppable from the elder. Now, this boss also drops Watcher's Eyes, but it's very, very important that you do not let the Shaper die during the normal elder fight. I'm not talking about Uber Elder, obviously there you have to kill the Shaper, but when you're doing the normal elder, like the easy one, if Shaper dies during this and the elder starts moving around at the end of the fight, that means that you cannot drop a Watcher's Eye, a 0% chance. Watcher's Eye can be very, very strong. Uh, from normal elder, you get a two stat elder uh, Watcher's Eye, and from the Uber elder, you get a three stat Watcher's Eye. They can be sold unidentified if you don't want to gamble, but gambling is fun, that's why we play this game. And um, there are um, another amulet from Elder. Elder actually has a lot of decent items. Impressence, that is the amulet that drops and uh, basically gives you a free blasphemy curse. And uh, yeah, Chaos one is like very, very popular, sells very well. He also has like Nebulok, can be like pretty expensive. The, um, the gloves have been used more lately with ailment builds. Uh, the belt, if you drop a 15% belt, that catalyst quality is to 18% attributes, and it's worth a lot amount. Like, I've sold some of those for 4 or 5x early for stat stackers because it can be a pain for them to craft a really good belt, so a, uh, a good one here sells for a lot. The wand and the bow I don't think has been used for a very long time. Now, if you have, let's say you're playing a low damage build like, um... Maybe you are using Righteous Fire, or you have a low clear speed build, and you're worried about damage, and you're worried about the Shaper dying. Then you can grab Frost Wall, and uh, you can put up a Frost Wall in front of Shaper. And you don't actually have to kill any... <coughs> Sorry. You don't actually have to kill any of the portals, you just have to wait. So you don't actually have to do anything but run around throwing Frost Wall and surviving until um, Shaper has done his job. Uber Elder, one of the hardest fights in... Path of Exile, and uh, here you fight Elder and the Shaper at the same time, and they're slightly harder than normal. And uh, the fragments from this is obviously gained from both the Elder and the Shaper, and uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. Here we drop Watcher's Eyes with three modifiers, and some of these can be worth a large, large amount. The most expensive one I've personally dropped was 310 Exalted Orbs, um, but uh, it's very, very easy to drop something that is usable. Like, when you have three stats, there's a very big chance that you'll get something that's usable. There's... It's a lot easier to get a more usable one for hardcore, because things like uh, physical damage taken as fire while using purity of fire isn't used as much on um, softcore, whereas on hardcore, these can be very strong for, for example, chieftain builds. Now, other loot involves Mark of the Elder and Mark of the Shaper. These are used probably more on softcore than hardcore, but pretty decent. Indigon falls a little bit in and out of favor, but also very, very strong. Um, sadly, was nerfed, but uh, still very strong. Um, there's also the Gulf Divination card for a two implicit corrupted thread of hope. We have um, the chest, which I forget the name of. Um, Shroud, Shroud of Eternity, which is very, very strong, generally very popular. We have a Disintegrator, which Generally, the only reason to use Disintegrator is that it's a cool item. It's not particularly great. And... And the Quiver. The Quiver is used quite a lot. Oh, and Voidforge. Sad times. Next up, we have Synthesis Bosses. These are crazy, crazy RNG to find. Um, they drop from tier 11 maps or higher, and you can uh, assign Atlas points to give yourself a bigger chance to find these. And you also get them from Zana daily missions. You can also roll things on your um, uh, watchstones that give you a higher chance of getting synthesis maps. And uh, they can also be witnessed for uh, like Maven fights. And there are four: altered, augmented, rewritten, and twisted. All of them are pretty reasonable fights. There are two things I really want to point out in the augmented distant memory, or I think it's the augmented one, the one that's like the physical one. 
it doesn't look like these it's it's more like bulky so I, it's either augmented or rewritten I'm not 100% sure now but uh, the physical one there are monsters in that area that um, they have a delayed explosion it'll rain down from like they sort of look like the uh, porcupines that everybody doesn't like and these are no different these are also hateful uh, they basically explode three or four seconds after dying and rain down insane damage. They're like one shot several of my characters, uh, or at least one. Um, and also, Twisted Distant Memory is the lightning boss. This is insane damage. I've had characters with 85 lightning rest almost get one shot, and that was like 8k life, 85 lightning rest. It's very, very hard to dodge the mechanic, and obviously the reason why it's so hard is also we don't encounter it a lot. So very, very... Uh, scared of the twisted distant memory the best way to fight these bosses is to have a very high damage build um like for example detonate dead has insane damage against these bosses and you can literally one shot them so a lot of the time on solo cell phone i would make a detonate dead build just for these bosses one shot the boss can't kill me if it's dead uh it also drops a circle of insert name here uh, rings, which will have like Herald of Ice, Reduced Reservation. There are some really, really cool rings. Some of these can be worth like 20 to 30x, maybe even more. So uh, they are, they can be very, very strong. Also, there is a fifth buff map boss here, which is called the Cortex. The Cortex drops the uh, very, very expensive Bottled Faith. Um, that is not the only thing that it can drop that is good. It can also drop an Nebulus, which is most of the time crap, but the Nebulus can come with an explosion implicit, which is fairly desirable even after the nerfs. Also drops Garb of the Ephemeral. This is very, very hard to use. However, it's very popular to use on anime guardians to give you crit immunity. Next up, let's talk about Cyrus Awakener of Worlds. Now, it probably has the best drop table and loot table out of any boss. However, not a very popular boss fight. Um, so it takes a while to spawn him at first, but uh, you have to go through and kill the Conquerors of the Atlas multiple times to gain Watchstones. And after you get the 16th Watchstone, you will start um, seeing that the Atlas in the middle start getting occupied or like highlighted with what boss you've killed. And now you have to kill them in order. Uh, not a set order, but you have to kill Baran, uh, Veritania, Drox, and Al Hazmin. Like you can't no you can no longer kill like three Barons in a row. And once all four have been killed past 16 and you get your 20th watchstone, then they're gonna fully occupy the center. It's gonna have like a um, a red ignite effect on it, and Zana will offer you a portal to Cyrus. This doesn't expire. You don't have to do this or feel pressured to do it instantly, but you are no longer spawning conquerors, which might be a good thing if you feel like your character is weak and you're not ready to fight higher levels. Um, but you can like keep this and fight this when you're ready. Like, also, there are some tips and tricks here worth mentioning. So if you want to fight an EC Cyrus, pull out all the watchstones of your Atlas before activating the fight. And once you've started the fight, you can't change it. Like, say that I activate the fight and then put in watchstones or pull out watchstones, nothing's going to affect that. You have to do it before clicking open portal. Um... And uh, in the same way, if you want a hard fight, you want to put all the watchstones in so you get a level 8 uh, Cyrus. And for this, you could borrow tradable watchstones of friends or buy them. Uh, like, you don't need uh, the max amount of natural watchstones. You can, like, buy them. So the loot is based on the Awakening level of Atlas, so the best items are gated behind level 8. Uh, Awakening level 9 is almost equal to level 8 for loot purposes. It seems to have slightly better chance to drop things like Awakener Orb and uh, better things. Like I think it's like a 5% increased drop rate. Uh, Cyrus itself has the best loot pool of all the bosses. They've done stellar work here. It's not sarcastic. It's really, really good. Because every single item from the boss has a very good use. And... I don't think it's ever not really been useful. Like every every drop is great. Not necessarily expensive because obviously when a boss has a common drop, like for example, Crown of the Inward Eye, that will go down in price very quickly. But let's look at the loot temple. Awaken Orb, very popular, worth 5x plus on hardcore. Crown of the Inward Eye generally sells for 2 to 5x ults early league and then the price uh, goes down fairly quickly. 
but it is one of the strongest helmets in the game, even though it is a common drop. The Savior, very, very popular with Paradoxica builds and um, those Ritual Gloves. Uh, we have the Unique Watchstones. They are fairly useful as well. Uh, especially things like Terry that up the map level by plus one, making us able to do tier 19 maps. We also have the Thread of Hope Jewel, incredibly useful for a lot of builds. It basically lets you assign passives inside a ring instead of having to travel there. Awakened Skill Gems, which also drops from the Conquerors, but really, really strong. Some of them are worth 30 to 60x. Pan of the High Templar. Um, these are only good if corrupted well, so mostly it's the worst drop, but it can also be worth 10 to 30x if you get really, really good corruptions. So every item here is really good. He also drops high level influence item types of any base type. And I think it would be a very, very cool addition if uh, Cyrus dropped items that were already awakened. So if you dropped a uh, amulet with hunter and shaper influence, I think that would be very, very cool as a rare drop. Uh, maybe something they should introduce at awakening level nine to make it a big difference over level eight. Also, while speaking of this, awakening level nine should also be a completely different fight that should be considered uber Cyrus and should probably have the conquerors in the Cyrus fight. So at item level zero, or sorry, Awakener zero, the item level base type is like 82 or 83. 82, I think. Maybe even 81. But at the highest level, it'll drop 84 or 85. 85, I think. Yeah, 85. Pretty sure it's not 86. Um, next up, we have the Maven Invitation. Maven can witness bosses in a map for arena fights with all the bosses. And uh, first you do fights with 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 10 bosses. The first 4 being quest items and the 10 boss fight being a random drop. The first one is guaranteed and after that you can drop them randomly. Uh, and these are also tradable. And the tradable invitations can be rolled like a map. The harder you roll them, the more Maven splinters you are going to get. And a warning, especially for the 10 fight, there is a tiny chance, for whatever reason they implemented this, that when you click the 10 boss fight, that all of them will spawn at the same time. Now, this is very popular on software and people enjoy it there, but on hardcore, you can just insta-pop your character. And you're like, oh, awesome. <laughs> so, um, very, very dangerous and worth being scared of. It's not a bug, it's just a small chance. Not sure why they added that. Um, having a choice would be nice. The first time you complete any of the tiers in the eight regions gives you two passive points for the region uh, of your atlas. And uh, repeating the same fight will only give you loot. So more maven splinters, etc. And it does give you a lot, a lot of drops. So it's worth doing. Witnessing a boss for imitation purposes means killing the boss of the map at a high enough level. And the map device does a pretty good job of instructing you like if it's high enough or if you're going to be able to witness it or not. And if the maven cannot witness a boss fight, the map device will give you a warning as well. Loot drops are the same as loot drops of the bosses you witness at the level you witness that. Uh, so you can get higher tier maps than the fight and so on. And that means that if you're doing the super advanced invitations, the end game ones, like for example, say you're doing um, uh, the Cortex fight, like the Feared, then that can again drop a bottle of fate. So it's like a second chance to get really good items. So they are very worth farming. So... Uh, like I said, in addition to the eight region Atlas passive, there's a ninth one called the Uncharted Realms. All of these are very, very strong, very good points. So something you want to go for early and the tree is hidden until you complete one of these or kill Maven. So we have the Formed, the Hidden, the Forgotten, the Feared, the Twisted, and the Maven's Writ. Um, the Shaper and Elder Guardians are the easiest, followed by the Synthesis Guardians. Uh, the Breach Sword are... Easy and hard. If you have a very high damage build and you can kill them as they're coming out, they are very easy. However, if you are a build that you end up with Ulnatol running after you, putting down spikes over the entire screen, it is probably harder than anything else. It's a very, very hard fight to be a low damage build. Invitations drop the Crescent Splinters, which drop the Maven's Writ upon reaching 10, similar to Breach Stones and stuff like that, but you don't need 100. Um, and the Invitation map items drop from the bosses that they can, like, they can drop from anywhere, but say you really need the Shaper Guardian Invitation, then doing Shaper Guardian, I think it was a 10 or 20% chance whenever you kill one, or 8, I can't remember, but it's a chance every time you kill a Shaper Guardian that you will drop their Invitation. But you can also drop them from random map bosses, but a way, way, way lower chance. 
These invitation items are tradable and can be rolled just like a normal map with modifiers, or they can be scoured if you want to do an easy one. You could also do it blue with something that won't affect the fight. The fights are of the highest level possible for the boss symbol, so even if you witness, for example, the Breach Lords at level 70, you are going to be fighting level 83, so basically pure ones, and they are very, very hard. And the loot drops include all of the items that the bosses can normally drop, so it's very, very profitable. Um, if you roll them very, very high, I can't remember if it's like 80 or 95%, but for example, the feared at like 90% plus will just straight up drop a Maven's Writ. I think with 0%, it'll drop four or six splinters, but if you roll it really well, it'll straight up drop 10. Um, so yeah, it's very, very worth having a strong enough build where you can roll them high. But this is very, very hard and can kill you easily on hardcore. Next up, we have the Maven, which is gather 10 Crescent Splinters for the Maven's Frit. And um, you get these from invitations, and uh, you can get them both from the 10-way invitations and also from the bosses. She has the worst loot drop table of any boss I've ever seen. I'm personally, and most people are very disappointed that this is a new boss. Like, this, this came into the game and already the loot table needs updating. Um, the only thing that is worth farming, because everything else is so cheap, is the Maven Orb. So that means that if you buy a set and don't get a Maven Orb, you lose money, no matter what else drops. Um, the chest is usable, but incredibly rare, and uh, the helmet is sometimes used. But uh, yeah, it's pretty bad loot. The Maven Orb, however, is really, really good. Another change that they should do for the Maven should be either to do a uber maven at a 9 awakening level which is slightly harder um, and with better loot but either way the maven should um it should drop um it should drop mob monsters sorry it should drop items with an elevated modifier uh, as if you've already used a maven orb so it should drop influence items with an elevated modifier that would be really really good because that would be exciting drops that you could use awakening orbs on so you could maybe like strive to find an already elevated like say like you very very rarely get like elevated tailwind on a boot and then you uh, awaken or of that onto another item this would make it a lot more chase and would give people more of a reason to fire maven while still having a, like a good amount of rng and the belts need to be buffed they're terrible um they also she also drops elevated sextants and uh, they're used for people super juicing their map they're very very strong sextants and people will use this in combination with the uh, harvest map enchant with does not consume sextant charges and yeah the rest of the items are pretty much vendor food some of them are used but it is very much a case of you want to try to use them because they sound cool or look cool Delve. Delve has three bosses at varying depths and they spawn randomly within their own city biomes. Um, so you can see like what kind of biome it is with an outpost by the edge of their tile and then like the special icons. Bosses have their own icon. We can see Al in the top right here, slightly under the token. Um, and um, Al is very, very rare. I haven't... Um, I haven't uh, found an owl in six to nine months, so yeah, it is very, very l uh, lucky if you find one, so don't like, fret too much if you don't find one. Also only spawns fairly deep in Dell, like around 200, and um, the city biome spawns and bosses inside them are random. So you can go down, generally what I would recommend is going down to around 300, and then uh, start going horizontally, and eventually you will find an owl. Del bosses all drop each part of the unique combined ring per, per precursor's emblem, and uh, like you can you can combine those for for another ring. And uh, if you fail this, you can reattempt it. So if you die on softcore, you can try again. Uh, sometimes it can be very very hard, especially with Owl or the Lich if it has really really good mon uh, mobs mods. Language is hard. Really really good mods on the uh, boss can make it very dangerous, especially haste mods. So, these are the three bosses. We have ah Ahua Totally, uh, which is the easiest one, and this can spawn around depth 40. Uh, it drops things like Doriani's Machinarium, which is worth a decent amount. 
Next up, we have Kurgle, which is an Abyss Lich and is very, very dangerous. Uh, starts to run Death 110, and the best thing here is probably Command of the Pit. Sometimes very expensive. Uh, and the most profitable one is Owl, the Crystal King. Starts around Death 180, and I recommend going to 300. And drops Owl's Uprising, the unique amulet, and it basically gives you, for example, a free pure, uh, sorry, free pride. Like, it can give you really, really good auras. Free hatred, free wrath. Um, and it also drops the Divination Guard, Luminous Trove, which is for the Voices Unique Jewel. Next up, we have the Bestiary Bosses, and these can be captured in maps like any other beasts. And um, you can fight the Captured Beast on the Blood Altar, and that opens six portals for the boss realm. And defeating the boss, or called the Spirit Beast, will give you a craft of his aspect and one pieces of the armor set. Some of these are used for like scams by players. So if you ever have a player message you with one of these, say like, oh, I'll trade you your expensive item for this item. This is expensive, I promise. Ignore that, it's a scam. Never trade items unless you know what you're doing. But um, some of the items are fairly expensive. Like the Fenomous Gloves are fairly expensive and uh, Farrell's Fur is pretty expensive. And uh, Finding the Beast is random, but you can influence the type of bestiary monsters in your map via lures. So, for example, you can get a Fenumal Lure, etc. And I would generally recommend doing Bestiary on tier 13 maps and higher if you can, because then you can get every beast. The, the highest tier for beasts is 13, then there's no restriction past that. Whereas, for example, you cannot get a Firewall in a tier 12 or lower. There are also Atlas passives that allow you to get either more rares or specific types of Bestiary monsters per map, and you can do that with uh, Watchstones as well. So the four different ones is Sakawal, First of the Sky, this is in tier 5+. plus. Kraken is tier 7+. plus. Venomous is tier 10+. plus. Barrel is tier 13+. plus. And uh, yeah, they drop all their respective armor pieces. And uh, yeah, there might have been most likely fixed in 3.15, but there was a bug where you might have to capture a boss piece first before you can use a captured boss. Like you can't, you couldn't buy one for a while, but I think that might be fixed. Um, but you will generally find a lot of the birds and a lot of the crabs. Next up, we have Legion. Legion Obelisk fights in the maps. They will drop splinters, more repetitive strain injury for you. And um, once you have a hundred of these, they combine into an emblem. And once you put at least two different ones or up to five different ones at once, your map device will allow you to enter the domain. And uh, the first time you do a four way, it will unlock the fifth slot on your map device, which is very good. You want to do that early. The fight is complete once you've killed one of each faction bosses, and uh, you can reset the fight by running back to the center and killing more monsters and bosses for additional loot. And all bosses can drop their own timeless jewel. So, for example, say we really want the red timeless jewel, glorious vanity, then killing um, Hyrie, the orange boss, will not give you that. That will give you lethal pride instead. So, um, a good trick for specifically trying to farm um, Glorious Vanity, the red one, then you want to kill the Vol boss repeatedly, and maybe even ditching the others. And rares in the domain will drop additional loot, so for example, incubators and stuff like that. Do we have any questions about bosses and how to get to them and stuff like that? And we're also going to see if we can make separate video guides for each boss and how to kill them, assuming that there's interest for that. But any boss-specific questions before we end? How long does it take to get Spider Boss if you have Atlas Sounds for Beasts? Is it 1 in 100? It's very RNG, but if you, uh, the best thing is to roll on Watchstones, like, I can't remember the exact wording, but it's like Arachnid or something, or Phenumal. Um, and then, uh, run with that with Bestiary Missions. Why do you think Cyrus dropping random woked items will be good? Don't you want to woke specific monsters together? Yes, you do, but it would be really, really cool because sometimes, especially early game, that would be an interesting thing to drop. Like, oh, I dropped a Shaper or Hunter amulet. And then you can use Harvest on that. Marvel's layer in 3.15. Thank you for the sub, next. Um, Step by step guide on spawning Cyrus would be awesome. I do think we have that. I don't think anything's changed for that, so I think that's on YouTube already. Not talking about builds right now. This is all about boss questions. 
The boss does have any armor or physical damage reduction? Yes. Uh, let's see. There's resist and we can like... They actually show us you in POB because I can't remember exactly. But uh, if you go over config here... Where's the boss one? Uh, maybe I actually need a build. Let me just import a build. Where's the boss one? It was on left panel. Oh, there. I'm so used to being bottom right. So if we see here, if we hover over this, hopefully you guys can see this. I uh, can see the standard bosses as the following modifiers. Um, 33% less effective of your hexes. So they have 33% curse reduction. Uh, and then standard bosses have 40% Ellie resist, 25% chaos resist. And then Cyrus has 66% curse reduction, 50% Ellie resist, 30 chaos resist, and 100% armor. And Shaper Guardians have 33% armor. Um, and because of this, this actually got buffed less than a year ago. And that actually made Inquisitor with the Ignore resist even better. However, like if you say, say you have like 70% penetration, then obviously that's better than just ignoring them. But uh, it does make the Inquisitor nodes very, very strong for bosses because you don't need to scale penetration at all when you have inevitable judgment. What are the best to farm in SSF bosses? Do you mean what are the best bosses to farm? If so, generally like Uber Elder is normally what I would like farming. So uh, for the Maven Invitation, is there a difference between witnessing Elder and Uber Elder? So if you witness Uber Elder, you don't have to kill Shaper and Elder. So you can do it faster. I think so, Laplace. I think there'll be a playlist of these. Early season, I had five to eight Awakener gem rows from Conquerors, all in a very tight succession. There's nothing for the rest of the season. Am I just unlucky, or is there a trick for the Conqueror maps to be tier 16? Well, they don't need to be tier 16 to drop uh, Awakener orbs. No, it's just pure RNG for them to be tier 16. Is it better to farm bus drops for your own build or go to money to... That depends a little bit. So I personally really enjoy, even when I'm on Trade League, I've always played my own version of SSF Lite if I am on Trade League. Like, I will always prefer farming my own items than buying them. So, but it is probably better to farm things for profit and buy your own items. And my favorite boss to farm is your brother. Resist pen work is flat, not portion of that resist. Yes. They, you can go negative. What's the current interaction with Awakener and Maven? I've noticed some people said they do a Maven fight before they could do Awakener. Well, I mean, if you have uh, if you have Maven points, you can upgrade the Awakener. Either make him drop more Awakened gems, or uh, you can make him um, um, higher level. Should I do four way or five way in SSF? So I would say it's nearly impossible for an SSF player to have a good enough build to do a five way. It's very very hard. Um, I sometimes get one build now and again that is strong enough to do a five way, but I generally recommend Headhunter for five ways. Um, generally, four ways are like, I would say three ways are the best for most people. Four ways, if you have a really strong build. Five ways, if you have a Headhunter or like a 200x build. Like five ways are very hard to efficiently farm. Is there a rank of difficulty for these bosses? Yes, I think I have a separate video where I rank the bosses in difficulty. Any recommended and safe builds to farm bosses? That's going to completely depend on the patch because every ascendancy is going to get a huge rework. Like I bet you anything in the new patch that this node does not look anything like this. There is a 0% chance that Consecrated Ground is going to give you immunity to elemental ailments. Or everybody's playing Inquisitor and Hardcore. Like, if this node doesn't change, I'm League starting Inquisitor. 100%. 0% chance of me doing anything else if this node looks the same. Have you done a Bone Shatter build guide? No, we're not talking about builds right now. And anyone putting up build guides right now is not somebody worth watching videos from. But yeah, I don't think any Ascendancy is going to have ailment immunity anymore. I 
think that is what where we're gonna end it for questions but i hope you guys enjoyed path of excel university we have more pu university tomorrow remember the schedule is on twitter um, so tomorrow we are doing uh, building defenses at 2.30. That's the dentist's favorite time. Um, and then at 4 p.m. we are going with life in Soul Self on Hardcore with New Yen. And at 5.30 we are going with item filters with Neversync. So two guest lessons tomorrow.